Hey folks, I'm back again to take a look at some more aquariums. As you can see over here, uh, this is my video for this week. I'm going to show you how I planted this tank, and it should be pretty exciting. On the Pet Tech Games channel, uh, I've done a full playthrough of Hellboy, and I, if you're curious about the Hellboy board game, I invite you to check out the other channel and uh, see that. I'm also going to be challenging Kerrigan to a game of Unmatched, which is a, a really quick uh, two to four player game, mostly two or four player game, uh, where you can you can battle with people from history. Uh, I don't know if we'll do Robin Hood versus Bigfoot or we'll do some of the other characters, but just to let you know, on the, on the other channel, I'm also making videos, albeit much, much slower pace than this channel. People seem moderately interested in the Show Me What You Got series, so I've decided just to keep going with it. I'm going to make at least one of these a week until I get through all the submissions. I, the submissions have slowed to, to some degree, so I could feasibly catch up one day. Uh, I'm not there yet. Um, I'm still actually going through the initial, uh, from the very first uh, submissions, I'm still going through most of those. and uh, But I'm getting, I'm getting fair amount done since I've been kind of consistently making videos for them. Okay, so I don't want to waste a lot of time. These submissions do come in from all around the world, and I think that that's awesome. I love seeing what people are doing in, in faraway places, places I can only dream about visiting, as well as places that are, you know, right around the corner. We, I think last video I had somebody from town uh, send me their, send me their tanks, but it's also really, really interesting to see things from far away. So our first one today is from Cape Town, and that's a place I've never been. I thought it'd be really interesting if we took a look at their tanks. And um, I've actually, I don't usually peep before I go in, but this one, while I was getting set up, I went ahead and looked, and wow, they have a really, really great setup. So I think I'm excited to just kind of lead it off with this one. Uh, this person wants to go by A New Day. That is their forum um, that's their forum name, A New Day, and uh, there's a link to that forum down in here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll try to remember to take that link and I'll put it in the description. So if you want to go check that out, you can. Okay, so they say, thanks for the opportunity uh, to show our tanks and get some feedback. I hope you're well under the circumstances. I am. I am. Uh, I've got word that I might be starting back to work soon. So I'm really excited about that. Hopefully things can get to start to approximate normal. Um, definitely at the last minute here. Okay, this is 180 liters. How many gallons is 180 liters? That would be 47.55 gallon. Thank you, Siri. So this is a 47.55 gallon <laughs> Jewel Rio. Um, it's a meter long. It's about three feet. Uh, pool filter sand in the front and a secondhand aqua soil in the back. Ter terraced with dragonstone. Very nice. And this is a really lovely aquarium. Look at that. That is so lush. And look at all the different colors and textures in here. Looks like some platies in there. Oh, and those are uh, rummy nose among my favorite. Boy, I bet those look great in a three foot tank kind of going back and forth. A lot of great plants in here. Everything looks super healthy. Look at that. Look at that. Really, really beautiful aquarium. Really beautiful. All right, let's see what else they said. Oh, it looks like we have another look at it. I'm really liking this, the new day. Very cool. Uh, I don't know if you have an Instagram, but you should really consider it. Okay. Another kind of close-up of the inhabitants in there. What plant is this? Is that uh, Monte Carlo? Oh, it's got a coolie loach. Look at that big fat coolie loach under there. <laughs> I love the striped coolie loaches. I, I really wish the ones I'd bought had survived. I'm going to have to try them again. That is beautiful. Uh, I hope the photo quality is okay. I'm using a dinosaur iPad camera. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, they weren't the greatest, but they, they weren't terrible at any means. I mean, we can definitely see how beautiful these are. Um, 
Please could you use my form name and new date? Oh, already way ahead of you. I'm a member of a tropical aquarium in South Africa. Here's a, here is the tank thread. The initial post shows the hardscape structure. Okay, so you can see how it's made uh, in this link. And I'm definitely going to put that in the description of this video. So you can go check it out if you're interested. Uh, he says it's a low, I assume it's a him. Uh, it says it's a low tech, low maintenance jungle, no pressure, no pressure CO2 for peaceful community fish. A uh, microdose sea chem, sea chem flourish advanced with trace elements and uh, whatever that word is. <laughs> and sea chem excel daily. Greetings from Cape Town. Mm, very cool. Yeah, he says he also has two smaller planted tanks, uh, natural style, a quarantine tank, meta breeding pond. Uh, oh, and there's some more pictures. This one got a rescape last week. Cherry shrimp, pygmy quarries, ember tetra. Would like to add chili rasboras. Oh, wow, I love all those fish. <laughs> you just listed a bunch of my favorite fish there, and that is a cool looking tank too. Very nicely aquascaped. See, I love it. I love these two. Uh, I love it when you do that. Um, kind of have a lot of stuff on one end. Like it's really packed on one end, and the other end is just kind of empty. It's really interesting and kind of off balance, and I, I really like that. It's really pleasing to the eye. Uh, there's another one that says, this one might get CPDs after lockdown. That's a Celestial Pearl Danios, I believe. Really neat. A very similar style uh, to the one before. As you can see, they kind of look like, it almost looks like this is where it started and that's where it ended. But they're different plants. This is a whole different aquarium. And, of course, the, the wood is a bit different, too. Uh, this one goes all the way over, but it still has a kind of extended on the side where, um, yeah, there's lots of kind of free empty space in this corner. And then it kind of grows up and gets gradually and gradually denser as it goes in. Very beautiful, very beautiful aquascape. That's excellent quality work there. I, that is very cool. Oh, there's more. A Pico. Look at this, folks. <laughs> This one's definitely too small and fiddly for most of you. <laughs> but it is really fun to make little experimental things like that. Now, this is basically a fish bowl. I don't, I don't think there's anything in, inside of there. Oh, uh, some shrimp, it says. Interesting experiment, doing well, I'd say. Really pretty to look at. I like that. What else we got here? Four gallon escaping from Scraps Challenge. Okay. Oh, that looks neat too. Great job for scraps. I like it. A new day. Uh, your tanks are beautiful. Thank you so much for sending them in. I hope you're doing well in Cape Town. Uh, I don't know much about that part of the world, but I'd like to know more. And uh, I think that was really cool of you. Thanks. Okay, we have another one. Uh, this one's a little unusual in that they sent me a link. They sent me a link to a OneDrive. I think it's a OneDrive. So hopefully it's uh, it's nice. <laughs> says, uh, hopefully I have showed you a pic of some Java Boss. Well, I hope you are too. <laughs> that was growing wildly out of control. I decided to put it into a hairnet and make a ball out of it. That's interesting. Uh, thanks for all you do. Kind regards. Vasilia. Uh, oh, looks like they have a YouTube channel. And there's not a link to the YouTube channel. But that is the name. Lugi Mistress. Okay. Uh, Lu. Lug. Lugi Mistress. Okay. It's kind of a weird name. That's okay. I won't judge you. Uh, there's a link right here. I'm going to press it. Let's see. Uh, definitely a OneDrive here. Oh, really neat. Yeah, so there you can take Java Moss, put it in a hairnet, and make it into a ball. Interesting. Well, thank you for sharing that. Okay, so here's something from Russ. Looks like he's got a Megaflex. That looks like a, I recognize a Megaflex anywhere. Now, let's see what he has to say here. Uh, it's newish, three months old. Hardscape is all locally collected from Canada. Okay. 
Uh, the substrate is combination tropical soil, fluval smart fluorite, fluval smart fluorite, and eco complete. Not sure on the types of plants. Just got the best looking, easy variety from my local fish store. Had on hand. So he's got uh, neon tetras, red tailed sharks. I guess those get pretty big. Uh, you can see you can see inside them. Okay. Uh, shrimp, red ones, like they're breeding like crazy. Okay, so Julie Corys. All doing well except I seem to lose the occasional Julie. I uh, don't know why. Basic water parameters are good. Oh, and there's a buttload of snails. <laughs> they were taking over the tank a month or so ago and it seems to have stabilized now. Uh, I took as many as I could find out during several water changes and now just, okay. Oh, he writes me quite a long letter here. Let's see. Uh, and he's, uh, yeah. Thank you, Russ. I appreciate your kind comments and stuff. Uh, I want to take a look at your tank real quick. Snails are tricky. I've made a couple of videos about uh, dealing with snails and stuff like that. Uh, to me, like... Uh, the biggest thing with snails is usually overfeeding. Like, uh, you can reduce the amount of food you're putting in there, and a, 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 eventually their population will balance out. You can also add fish that eat them. Yo-yo uh, -yo loaches will eat snails. Uh, you can put one assassin snail in. Don't put a bunch of assassin snails in because they will multiply, and then you'll have a, an assassin snail problem. Uh, put one assassin snail in there and gradually over time they will decrease or kind of keep the population in check. Um, looks like a really great tank, especially for being so young. Uh, I like the I like the different types of plants that you have in there. I have a feeling these plants here will probably take over. Uh, anytime I plant a plant like that, it looks like a bowel of some sort. Um, they tend to they tend to take over the pl the tank. Uh, you got a lot of stem plants, which look really beautiful, and I added stem plants into mine. But um, you know, lately I found them to be almost more hassle than they're worth. It seems like I'm always having to trim these things, and uh, you know, they're just not my favorite plants. They look really good though. Uh, same over here. With these, they, they're great, like, especially these red ones, they're, they're, oh, come on. They're great for adding color to a tank. A little splash of red in there, and like the different tones of greens. Uh, this plant, when it gets taller, is going to have a reddish color too. And that's all well and good, very nice. Got some Anubias kind of jammed in there, that looks appropriate. It's good that you don't have it right under the light, you know, like it's a little bit, kind of shaded, which is going to help it, uh, help keep it from being covered in al algae or down in the lower parts of your tank works too. Uh, too many times, like even on mine, like across the top here, I put a bunch of Anubias up there and it's just getting torn up with algae and stuff. It was really dumb on my part for doing that. <laughs> Sounds like your stocking's okay. I'm not sure about the red-tailed shark if you put those in there. They get quite large, um, you know, if they survive, they, you know, they will outgrow this tank. So that's just something to consider. Uh, it's a real common thing because they're real attractive and you go to a lot of pet stores and they're pretty small because they sell them as babies. Um, but red tail sharks are pretty large animals, so for fish anyway. So just consider that uh, as you move forward. Overall, I do love your tank. You made some. Uh, there might be some plant choices that that um, that bug you later. Like what happens with these is you have to with a lot of these stem plants. They grow up. They go grow up tall, and then they'll start to cover the top of your tank and block out light. And the best thing to do with them is to trim them like halfway through or so, pull out the old ones, and then replant them. And replanting stem plants can be kind of like kind of painful kind of a pain in the butt it does keep them looking really good though like it can be it can work out and be fine but i just want to warn you that sometimes it's a pain in the butt and like that's why my favorite plant ever is anubius 
you can put a whole tank of them like that, and they ba basically stay that way for months <laughs> because they grow, they grow so so slow. Overall, though, really cool looking tank, and I appreciate your submission. Thank you. Okay, we have another one from uh, Carl, and Carl says uh, one tank is a seventy-five gallon, the next is a thirty-six bow front, and the last one is a twenty-nine gallon. That looks like a bow front. All right, so uh, this is a 36 gallon bow front tank. Well, that is the picture of basic. <laughs> that is, uh, you got your sponge filter, kind of dead center there in the middle. Um, interesting background. The background looks pretty neat. It looks like, do you have a canister on there too? Maybe this is a new tank and he's getting it set up because it looks like there's a canister filter kind of integrated into there. But he's also got a sponge filter. Can't give you points for decorating on this one. It's a cool looking aquarium. Um, or it could be. But right now it's it's empty. Okay. Are you? Maybe they're just getting started because all these tanks except for the bottom one there seems to be empty. Got a good start going here. Got some cholo wood. Like, you know, it took me years to get to saying that right. So I hopefully I'm, I'm getting closer and closer. I've been corrected a number of times. It's like some pool filter sand or something like that. Some basic plants. Uh, this plant you got here uh, gets enormous. Um, if, if this were a 90 gallon tank, it would be probably appropriate for that plant. <laughs> Uh, that plant, if it survives, could fill up the entirety of that aquarium. Like, it will literally fill up every empty space in that aquarium with, with its leaves. Uh, they get huge. They come in, like, little bulbs, and you can put them in there. I put one of those in my 56-gallon, uh, and it basically it took over an entire half of that aquarium. So, uh, let's see what we got here at the bottom. Looks like we got some, uh, uh, that's a reflection. We got a DIY uh, moving bed filter out of here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, ones that small are not very effective, as it turns out. Uh, it might work out okay for this little, this little tank, but for the most part, uh, the moving bed filters need a lot of space. Like, you need a lot of that material for it to really work. And you got kind of a basic setup going there with some crypts. Crypts are always a good choice for, for an aquarium, especially if you're a beginner because they really get things things moving in there. It looks like we've got a cute little fish hiding behind here. I can't tell if that's a betta or some sort of cichlid or something. I haven't seen many white cichlids, so it might be a betta. Nice home for him if that's the case. <laughs> All right, thank you very much for your submissions. We've got one here from Ron. This is my 75-gallon Sedona tank that has yet to be stocked with fish, okay? Working on cycling the tannin out, but lately I've been contemplating a blackwater setting. <laughs> then you can start now. <laughs> Feel free to use or talk about it or not. Have a great day, Ronnie. Well, thank you, Ronnie. Uh, so with tannins, fish don't mind tannins at all. Tannins can look, uh, can be pretty nice. Uh, this looks pretty neat. Are you Almost looks like you're setting up a paludarium there. Oh, it does look like a, really it's a paludarium. So it's like a tank on the bottom with a little waterfall and stuff. That's cool. Not a, the greatest picture in the world, but, um, but it looks like it would be a really neat aquarium. You got some plants down in here. Yeah, you can put some low light plants in there and still have your tannins and stuff. And you've got so much empty space at the top. You know, you could have a nice tannin filled water down the bottom, and I think that that would look pretty neat. That's a that's a pretty cool looking paludarium. I'd love to have something like going like that, especially at that size. I just don't have room. I'm completely out of room here, but I like that. I think that looks I think that looks fun. Okay, so we have one from Carl here, and uh, I'll go ahead and download. This is a 55 liter tank. How many gallons is 55 liters? That would be 14 point. 
Thank you. This is a 14 and a half gallon tank, uh, which holds one koi betta and two nerite snails. That's a that's a large amount of room for uh, a betta fish, which is that's always nice. Uh, we use citric acid DIY CO2. Okay, I haven't tried that one, that particular one. Daily Ferts and Fluval Plant Nano because of your review of it. Okay. Oh, the light. Okay. Yeah, I love that light. Got one going right over here on this thing. We liked the look of the tank you reviewed, the light on, so we sought to find a similar one and ended up with the Aqua Nano 40. All right. Oh, that's cool. That is real cool. Picture's a little blurry, but let's zoom in here and take a look. Yeah, I like it. Looks like you got something. Some of your plants floating up there at the top. I, I have that going on a lot too, especially with stem plants as I trim them and stuff. I, I like this kind of messy look at the bottom with like the different types of plants. It looks like he's got, uh, I'm not sure what that is, if it's Monte Carlo or something else, and like some hair grass or some other kind of... Uh, thing mixed in there. It can be really hard to mix your different uh, carpeting plants together because usually one will take over and kill the other one. At least that's been my experience. Like you'll get, I'll, I'll have a brief period where it works out and then suddenly, usually like, especially if you got CO2 and you've got um, Monte Carlo mixed together, the Monte Carlo will just run all over and choke out anything else that it encounters. I like it. It looks pretty good. Got your thermometer sticking right up there in the front. <laughs> Usually if I'm going to send a picture in, I'll, I'll take my thermometer out or move it around the back. But I'm not going to criticize you too much because that's a cool looking tank. And uh, I appreciate your submission. Thank you. Okay, we have another one here from Matthew. Matthew says, hey Sean, thanks for doing this. Great idea. The little one is a bit of a scrap tank lockdown style. With bits of wood collected from various beaches over the years, plants stolen from other tanks, that's what I do. Uh, <laughs> a vase I found in the garage, makeshift mat and filter, uh, aquatic compost from the pond, sort of a, a father fish style. I saw him doing that. Uh, sand from my kid's play pit. Wow, <laughs> you really did pit, pull it from everywhere. Uh, the bigger tank is five by two by two with red cobra guppies, a couple of Bristle nose fry and tons of cherry shrimp. Parting the Anubius hanging around. Dropped it in for the shrimp to clean up, ready to go in my boy's tank. He wanted a diet and a sore themed one. <laughs> really couldn't say no. I don't blame you. That sounds cool. Critique away or any questions, feel free to ask. I'm always keen to speak for help fellow hobbies that don't really get a chance so, so I bore my life, my wife with it. <laughs> wow, that's pretty. I like that. That's a cool tank. How do you pay attention to your video game with that tank there next to you? <laughs> oh, and it looks like this is cool too. It looks like he's got some plants coming up out of it. Um, so I don't know if that's a planter or if there, like water goes up into that. That would be really neat if it did. But it's really neat anyway. Let's see if I can get just the picture on here. Okay. Let's take a look from side to side here. A lot of pretty fish in there too. This is cool. This is cool, that grass. You got kind of a, it's, it's really symmetrical. Which is, a, is one way to go with your, with your aquascape. So you got, you got this, and then mirrored on the other side with it looks like a bunch of java fern in the middle. Uh, it's, it's nice and full and it looks great. I, I think as this starts to spread, and what that's gonna do is it's gonna spread all over the tank. I had this plant before and it goes, it goes everywhere. I think these, these smaller ones uh, at the base are probably something else. And those look like little rica rocks almost. Like you've got moss or rica tied to those rocks or glued on those rocks. That's a, uh, that stuff will eventually go everywhere, and the thicker it gets, the, the better it's going to look. Although it looks really good right now. Very cool. It's a little more symmetrical than I would tend to do. Like, I would almost have put 
like if I was going to do the same tank and I had all the same materials, I probably would have put that chunk in the middle and put the middle over there so it's a little bit off balance and it kind of looks like a blending of two, a little bit more of two different uh, areas of the bottom of the water. That being said, it still is a really, really pretty tank and I like it a lot. All right, let's see. Wow, that's a cool little nano. That must be the vase from the garage. <laughs> and the and the like random things from around your yard and stuff. I like it. I really like it. Uh, it's it's super hard to aquascape in small areas. You've done a good job of kind of mixing like different types of leaf textures. Uh, we got integrated in some wood and stuff to kind of give it a little mystery and make you think about. Um, what's going on, where the, where does the, where does the wood go? <laughs> Which just sounds silly when I say it out loud, but I think your brain does that when you see like little bits of wood coming out of other things. And, uh, pushing this up. Oh, little tiny bristle nose. These things are so, so cute when they're small. I love baby bristle nose. There's another shot of it on this leaf. What a cool shot. Look at the texture on that leaf. Wow. That makes me want to make a thumbnail. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, thumbnail. Very neat picture. He sent a lot of photographs of all of his different animals and stuff. Oh, that's a pretty guppy. I like that. I think they said it was a cobra. Cobra. The old cherry shrimp. That looks menacing. Can you imagine like, being a little thing on that leaf and it's like dun, 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 dun. very very beautiful little tank there it looks like the female from the from those guppies pretty fish matthew that's some gorgeous fish uh, a couple of really pretty tanks too and i like how uh, innovative you were finding your components and ingredients i think that's really admirable so thanks for sending them in okay we have a submission from adam and uh, Adam has some nice things to say. He likes uh, he likes my videos, in particular my my uh, nano videos. And he says, "Here's my here's my ten gallon aquarium called Anubis Archipelago. Very cool. And uh, it looks like it's a variety, mostly a variety of different kinds of Anubius. Some of these I've had before. I think I've had some golden coin before." Um, I don't think it survived. Like, I think something happened and mine didn't make it. Uh, definitely had Nana, Nana Petite. And uh, I think I've had the other one, too, for that matter. Uh, he's also got Buse. Like, there's, and there's a million kinds of Buse, too. Don't even get me started on trying to figure out, like, all the... I can't... I have no idea what kind of Buse I have in my takes. Uh, so, Wasser Tang, which is really interesting. I have just a little bit of that. Going in a couple of places. Uh, frog bed, of course, I've talked about frog bed endlessly. And Christmas moss, uh, stocking list, hundreds of Bloody Mary Neocaridia shrimp. Hardscape list, wow. Two dragonstone, one spider wood, 88 aqua soil, capped with black diamond blasting sand. Okay. Uh, filter fluval C3, hang on the back. Phoenix planted plus 24-7. I've wondered about the 24-7. Like, I was considering getting that, because I really like the regular planted plus, uh, Regular Planet Plus one. Oh, that's really pretty. I'll tell you what. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with a 10-gallon tank. Um, looks really neat. Oh, and I love Anubias, too. I bet your shrimp are just loving it. I can tell there's a bunch of these little Bloody Mary shrimp in there, which is probably just a specific variety of cherry red shrimp. Very neat. Uh, I think this looks really good. Like I like the I like the style. I like that that's that side's like a little bit bigger than this side. It kind of gives you that art that off balance look that kind of makes things feel more natural. You've got a good mix of plants. Uh, a lot of different um, versions of some of these uh, Anubias plants. I think that's great. One thing I would do personally, if this were mine, is I'd go ahead and black out that background. 
uh, if that background ground were blank, for instance, we'd only be seeing the bottom of that, which can easily you know be planted over as the plants grow and stuff might cover that up. And this whole top part that's black would just disappear. It just disappear in there. And these cords, stuff like that, just disappears. Uh, you'd still see this a little bit, but it wouldn't be nearly as pronounced as it is now um, on the back. That's what I love about the black backgrounds. Also, they make they make your little the definitions of your plants and stuff, especially where it's green, it makes it really super vibrant for some reason. It'll greatly improve the colors of your shrimp too. Um, I've recently discovered if you put shrimp in really light, uh, like I, I put some shrimp in my sump, for instance, and recently discovered that they will turn almost clear. So the brighter their surroundings are, actually the more clear they go. So if you darken it up, you might actually get even more color out of your shrimp. But all that being said, it's a beautiful tank. Thanks for sending it in. Okay, I think this is going to be my last one, and we've got one here for from Andrew. Um, this is his 90-gallon tank. His name's Andrew. Uh, not showing, but in value, it would be great. It's a community tank. I have Congo Tetras, Angel Fish, Danios, Corys, Placos, Samis, Algae Eaters, Threadfin Rainbows, and Rummy Nose Tetras. My social media share is, uh, is Instagram. And I've started... Uh, Turning the photos into art while still including the photo. Okay, interesting. Ooh, now that is pretty. Looks like he wrote me twice. So one's from the 14th and one's from the 17th. So we might have some more pictures here. Uh, I definitely want to take a closer look at this. Wow, did you say that was 90 gallons? What is that? Yeah, 90 gallon tank. That doesn't look like a 90 gallon tank, does it? It almost looks it almost looks like maybe a 55 or a 70, but I guess they have a similar shape. You can only tell by the size of like these Congo Tetris, which look pretty mature. My goodness, that angelfish is gorgeous too. I love the stripy angelfish. The Ultim, I think that's right. I think that's what it's called. This looks really, really nice. I love the different leaves. Leaves. Oh, I love these two. The kind of lace leaf plant. I can't remember what it's called, but wow, that is gorgeous. I love the different wood, like the wood texture in there, kind of breaking out the different types of plants, kind of creating zones inside of your aquarium. Uh, and then the open space right there kind of offset almost to the middle, but not quite to the middle. And then a little bit more open space back behind it. Uh, all the plants look nice and healthy and cool. Is there some buse there? Boy, I wish I could get my buse to be that, that algae free. <laughs> that looks great. Uh, even the rock down there looks like it's well placed and, and just kind of neat even though they're just kind of different from the other rocks that is a gorgeous tank i really like it looks like he sent in a couple other tanks i'll go ahead and show you those two uh water box 30 with serenity lights uh on the back this is a little blurry but it has a mix of shrimp male placo white clouds quarries and some cherry barbs in there that's pretty Yeah, I really like these. That light's kind of funky. It's making it look like it's uh, colored all the way around. Interesting. Wow, those are some great tanks. That one especially is very gorgeous. Very gorgeous aquarium. Thanks so much, Andrew, for sending those in. Uh, those are some pretty, pretty tanks. I really like them a lot. And folks, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up today. I want to keep these videos pretty tight, pretty close, and I'll be sure to include links for all the people that, that sent me links uh, in the description down below where you can check it out. Uh, I hope to see you this weekend for this, <laughs> for this aquarium here uh, as I finish it up. 
I'm probably going to add some fish to it, I think, today. Uh, I'm going to do another water test. It seemed okay. So I'm going to do another water test and make sure it's all right, and then I'm going to add some of my uh, baby guppies, which I might talk about on the very next video uh, in two weeks from now. I'll be back with another one of these uh, Share Your Tanks videos. Oh, I wanted to mention, too, last week my schedule got all messed up. I released one of these videos on Friday, and then just a couple of hours later, that weekend's video came out. That was unintentional. It was supposed to come out on Sunday for the, the terrarium video. It was supposed to come out Sunday. That was a, kind of an accident, like an oopsie, but I just kind of let it go. And because of that, uh, both videos did not do as well <laughs> as they normally do. Oh, well. That's all right, though. I'm doing this one nice and early in the week. I'd like to get these out by Wednesday if I could. I think that that would be, it would be better, you know, to kind of give some space between the videos. So uh, I'm, next Wednesday, hopefully, I'll be back with another show me what you got. I can't believe I've done seven of these. I'm still in the initial outpouring of submissions, but uh, I'm going to keep going. Lots of cool tanks to look at from all around the world. I'm fascinated by you guys, and I really appreciate uh, you share in your tanks with all of us. So until we meet again, follow your bliss, keep a clean tank, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.